Hello, my name is Denzel and welcome to Art in Motion. Today I'm going to show you how to use collections and view layers in Blender 2.8. And as they used to be known in older versions of Blender, groups and render layers. Let's begin. As you can see in our scene, we've got blue objects, green objects and red objects. Some of them are monkeys, some of them are cubes and some of them are spheres. And what we're going to do is we're going to organize each of these objects into their own specific collections. So there's multiple ways to create new collections and add objects into collections. So let's begin. First, we're going to select all these blue objects, press M on our keyboard and say add to collection. We can then rename the group right from the control panel, blue, and press OK. So now in our outliner, those objects have been added to the blue collection, which we can hide and unhide. We can also add a new collection by pressing the new collection button just above the outliner. We can also just double click on the collection to rename it. We'll name this one green. We can then select all of the green objects, press M on our keyboard and click on the green collection. And as you can see, all the green objects have been added to the green collection. We can press this button again to create a new collection. But as you can see, because we already had a collection selected, it will create a collection inside of another collection. So we'll just click and hold and drag it out of that collection, double click it to rename it to red, and then we'll take all of these leftover objects and drag them into the red collection. So now we've got a red collection, a green collection, and a blue collection. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add three new collections. The first one we'll name balls. The second one we'll name cubes. And the third one we'll name monkeys. Now we can select all of the monkeys, press M on our keyboard, add it to the monkey collection. And they will be added to the monkey collection, but they'll also be removed from the red, green and blue collections. So let's just undo that. There is a way around this, and it also makes your project a lot cleaner. We can just stick our mouse over here in the corner of the outliner, pull it down to split it, and we'll just collapse all of these groups in this part of the outliner. And in this outliner, right next to the new collection button, we'll press on this filter button and turn off collections. And now all that we see is every object that we have in our scene without the collection but it also makes things a lot easier to just click on all these objects by holding down shift and dragging them into their specific groups. We can also press B on our keyboard and box select. And we'll do the same with Susan and pop it in there. So now everything is in its own group without being removed from any of its other groups. So this helps to keep your scene a lot more organized. If you hold down control and click on the eye symbol next to one of the groups, it'll isolate those objects. So you can see just those objects. So for example, here I can see only the ball objects, or I can see only the cube objects, or only red objects, or only green objects. Or say I just wanted to have everything on again, I can just turn everything on and turn off any group that I don't want to see. Now the reason I like to split my outline into two halves like this is because when you expand all of these different collections, your scene looks incredibly complicated, like you've suddenly got two to three times the amount of objects that you actually do. So this helps me to keep track of what objects I have in my scene. This just helps keep my scene organized. All right, so we've got one more collection to make. And then I'm going to show you some interesting uses for collections other than just keeping your project organized. And remember, if you enjoy my content and you want to learn more, just hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you can get notified when I post another video. All right, so let's make that collection. First, we'll just select scene collection at the top here. Click on the new collection button, double click, name this all, and then we'll just take everything that is in our scene over here press b select everything and drag it into there now this extra collection gives us a few interesting abilities we can hide and unhide any of the collections as usual if we hold down control and try to isolate any of these collections 
and then we want them all to come back, we just click on the all collection and all of them will unhide. Okay, now one interesting thing about collections, if I select everything and duplicate it and move it out the way, and so let's duplicate it again, move it out the way, all of these things will already be in their correct groups because they were previously grouped. So, I mean, he has blue, green, um, and red. All still works, just with more objects. Another cool thing that we can do with collections, if we go to the add menu here and go down to collection instances or press shift A and go down to collection instances, we can add an instance of a group. So we'll just add the all group. Um, now, what an instance is, it's a copy of a group. It's a copy that works like it's a single object. But if you edit the original collection, it will change the instance. You can also go to the object settings over here, scroll down to where it says instances, if you have an instance selected, and you can change which group it is instancing. Another interesting use for collections and instances is particle systems. So if we press shift A and add a icosphere, make this a little bigger, go down to the particles tab at the bottom, add a new particle system, scroll down to where it says render and where it says render as we'll change it to collection and it will open up all these extra options we'll then select a group so we can select balls uh, we can make these a little bigger all right even though this works very well you'll notice in this case if I were to select the all collection it doesn't work and the reason being is because the icosphere is inside of the all group. So an object cannot instance itself. So in order to fix this, we just select the icosphere, press M, and then move it into scene collection. And there we have it. All the objects are being used as particles. Okay, so now that you understand how collections work, I've opened up a new project to show you how to use collections with render layers, or as they're called in Blender 2.8, view layers. So first, let me just take you through my project. As you can see, I've taken my project and I've put everything into groups. I've got the lights, I've got the front face of the AIM, I've got the bevel of the AIM, and I've got the rest of the body of the AIM. I've also got the title and the front faces of the title, as well as the background bevel. So let's just turn everything back on, go to the camera view, and this is what we're rendering. Now it might seem a little bit boring, but what we're going to do is we're going to texture everything in post using render layers, just to show you how render layers work and the kind of things that you can do with render layers and compositing. I'm going to take you through the basics. I'm not going to fully texture everything, but I'll try and give you a good idea of how it would work if you were doing it in a compositor. And the same things sort of apply inside of uh, Photoshop or GIMP or whatever sort of um, image editor or video editor you're using. So we're going to start by going to the top here where the view layers are or render layers as we used to know them. And we'll just rename this one AIM Front. And what we want to do is we want to put only the front face on this render layer. And the way we do that is by selecting everything else in our outliner, except for the lights and the front face collection, right clicking, going to view layer and setting exclude. Now that's everything that's inside of this view layer. Let's just press render and that's what we get. The next step is we go to the top and there's a button next to the view layer. You click it to create a new layer. We can then name this one uh, AIM bevel. We'll select everything except for the lights and the bevel. And we'll say exclude. And there we have it. Yet again, we get exactly what we need. And as you saw there, it sort of popped on for a bit. So if we go to the top here where it says composite, we can go down to all the different render layers.
so we can actually see what our render layers look like. So I'm going to create the rest of the render layers so you don't have to really worry about that. So I'm going to create the rest of the render layers very quickly. So it's going to speed through that and then we're going to get to the compositing side of things. Alright, so now that we're all set up, we're just going to do a quick render. And now we'll go through those layers. So we've got the front, the bevel, the front of the text, the body of the AIM, we've got the body of the text, and we've got the background, and we've also got a layer where everything's together. By the way, before we continue, you can get all of the music that I use in my videos from Artlist. And if you use the link in the description, you'll get an additional two months free. Artlist is an incredible website that offers unlimited downloads, unlimited licensing including for commercial use, lifetime use for songs that you download, and it's pre-checked for monetization on YouTube. And new music is added every month. So subscribe now and get an additional two months free if you use the link in the description below. Alright, so the next step we're just going to head over to the compositor. And we can just go here. You'll normally be greeted with something that looks similar to this. Um, don't forget to turn on backdrop, uh, auto render and use nodes. You'll notice that this is not showing anything. What I like to do is press control A, go to layout, go to reroute. We'll just press G and move it over here. We'll then press shift A, go to output viewer and plug it into the viewer. And there we can see whatever we need to see. Um, I love this new feature that is so good. Okay, so this one we're gonna actually change to master layer if it isn't already on master layer. So we get this sort of image. We will then need to find our textures. So what I like to do is I go to flickr.com and I just search for whatever I'm looking for. So graffiti. And then where it says any license, we will go to commercial use allowed. And then we'll just search for something that we really like. Preferably something that's direct onto you. Uh, we'll download this one, go to original file. And there, while we wait for it to download, we'll go back to Blender. And then we go Shift A, input, image, open image. Go to wherever we downloaded it to. We can check it out here. I've actually got two, but I think I'm going to prefer to use this one. Now this one, if we plug it in there, we can see what it looks like. And then we want to mix these two together. So we'll go just to show you color mix. And bam, there we have it. All mixed together, all beautiful like. We'll change it to multiply. See, that's not exactly the most appealing looking thing. Or, you know, let's try, I don't know, overlay. Yeah, still not working. So that's what we've got the layers for. We press Shift D to duplicate the render layer. We then change this to, uh, we change to the AM, uh, IAM front faces. And then we take the alpha channel and we use it in the factor. Now, it masks out everything except for where you want it to be. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So we'll do this again. We will duplicate our mix node. And in fact, I think we'll change this to screen. Just to, nah, I think it looks better as multiply. There we go. Um, another, th oh yeah, not only that, but there's another thing we can do. We can go shift A and go to distort and change it to transform and put it in there so we can now change the scale of the graffiti. So we can scale it up and down and move it left and right or up and down. I mean, that's pretty nifty. 
Don't forget you can do this kind of stuff inside of Photoshop. It's probably a hell of a lot easier to do it in Photoshop. But let's just take you through one more of these layers just to give you a good idea of um, the kind of uses you can get out of this. As you saw, I had another piece of graffiti. So what we're going to do, we'll duplicate the texture, plug it into there. We will then duplicate the layer, change this one to AIM body and we'll use the alpha. But I actually want this for the wall. So we will go shift A, color, invert. And there we have it. It's now on the wall. And just to, just to make things a little bit more interesting, because we can't really read the art in motion, we'll go shift A, we will add color, alpha over, plug it into there, and then we'll duplicate one of the render layers, plug it into the bottom here, and we will make text front. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a, it's a really interesting way to kind of get different looks. In fact, let's just change the graffiti from one graffiti to the other. We'll duplicate the scale and plop it in by this texture. Uh, let's reduce its size even more because it's still huge. And there we have it. I think that looks pretty cool. It's a nice, uh, interesting way to get a new kind of look and it's an interesting way to get textures. Uh, I think the next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can actually apply this to moving images and animations inside of After Effects from Blender because there's ways that you can export animated cameras and objects and uh, null objects and stuff into After Effects in order to to help you guide other 3D objects within your scene inside of After Effects. Okay, there's one more thing that you need to be made aware of. If you wanna export each of these layers separately, you can do it one at a time in, in many different ways, but what I like to do is I will duplicate each one of these, change it to the different layers that I want, and then I will go to Output, File Output, and here is where I will plug in each layer. So you say where you want it to go, and then uh, you just decide where you want to save it out to, and then you can go here to properties over here, expand it, and you can add an output. So each one of these you can just plug in. So if I wanted each one of these to have their own uh, file name and everything, I can just go in here and rename them as I wish and do whatever. But this to me has always been the best way to save out multiple layers for After Effects or Photoshop or for like a lot of animations and stuff. This just makes things a lot easier than having to go to a uh, file, save or whatever. It's just, a, it's a far simpler way to do things. And any changes you make, it'll automatically output it when you press render. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you found this useful or interesting and hopefully you can use this at some point in uh, one of your projects. If not, I'm hoping it at least gave you a better understanding of how render layers work and the type of things you can do with render layers and how powerful they can be. So please just consider subscribing to my channel and maybe donating to my Patreon or sending me some crypto. Uh, every little bit helps and I really appreciate it and I hope to have more videos coming out soon. People want to talk that talk in reality. You have not seen me in action. You think the come up comes overnight. You ain't behind the scenes. Trust me, these things don't just happen. No shade of Gerald, but G's don't come easy when you trying to eat our producer and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign, but excuse me, I can't help myself. I'm just laughing. Hey, you trying to cut out a piece of my pie and I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me? Yeah. I produce all my own beats and I have no intention of losing my publisher. Yeah, independent individual boy. I've been eating our passive residuals. Yeah, let's be professional. Thanks for your time. But I had to decline at that principle <laughs>